Welcome to the ACE Masterclass, a new podcast series featuring ACE 2021 critique and awards winners. This digital series will highlight an ACE member or team in a short discussion to explain their strategy, technique, and personality. We hope to use this as a tool to keep members engaged, enlightened, and excited about it. Greetings. Um, my name is Shanae Bradley, and I serve as Senior Communication Specialist for Fort Valley State University's Agricultural Communications Department. I also have the privilege of serving as Director of Member Services for the ACE Board. Today, I have the exciting opportunity to speak with two masterclass teachers who hail from Auburn University. Please meet Justin Miller, Communications and Marketing Specialist 2 for the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service, and Katie Nichols, Communications and Marketing Specialist 3 for the Alabama Cooperative Extension Service. In 2021, Miller and Nichols received the Bronze Award for the Social Media One campaign, Organic Beer Processing Video Series. Today, we will discuss how this project came to be and how this duo mastered their class. Lastly, we will end with the lightning round to get to know a little bit more about their personalities. So Justin and Katie, are you ready to master your class? You're ready. <laughs> well, thank you guys once again for agreeing to participate. Um, and today we're going to kind of be focusing on social media campaigns. And um, everyone is now engulfed in social media. So I thought this would be a good topic for you guys to share what strategies you've taken. So let's start first and foremost. Describe your implementation of a social media campaign for deer processing. So when we really kind of was looking at how we want to go about doing this, this process, um, there was a lot of behind the scenes kind of work coming before we even really decided that we wanted to do a campaign from it. Um, so we used our uh, two most uh, large platforms, Facebook and Twitter, um, and decided to kind of tar try to target some audiences uh, that we may not normally be reaching through Facebook and Twitter uh, with this particular subject area. Okay. And um, I know you guys can probably be inundated with um, feeds and analytics and different things like that. And it's, it was a change for me, um, even getting into social media. So can you talk about why did you take this process of educating your audience about deer processing to social media rather than a traditional publication or something kind of standard? Um, so one of the really great things about this social media campaign was that our um, video team was working alongside the forestry and natural resources specialists to develop um, a video series uh, before we even got involved. Um, one of our colleagues on the video team reached out and said, hey, I just want to get your take on this video. Um, I'm working on a long series. And before I continue, I want your feedback. And when Justin and I saw the videos, we thought, oh my word, these are made for social media. And so the first one, he kind of tweaked a little bit. We made some suggestions on the length of time just to um, help tailor it a little bit more for social media. Um, so that was kind of a unique thing that it was already in progress and we kind of were able to step in after the first video and say, this is great. If you make a few tweaks, this would be tailor-made for social media and we could see this um, just taking advantage of content that you've already begun working on, that they've already developed and we can spin it in a way that's more exciting and a little bit more palatable for social media. So that was kind of a unique situation that doesn't always happen when you're you know, coming up with a social media campaign, um, but it really worked in our favor. They had already done a lot of the legwork and the video team was doing some great, um, obviously some great videos. And so um, we were able to take advantage of that and it was a huge team effort to come up with the social media campaign. Ooh. And I like what you said, because we do a lot of repurposing kind of where we are. And it's, it's good because it's like they using multimedia skills. So if you already have video, um, you can turn it into short social media videos, which is good for that platform. 
because people tend to just be scrolling. So I'm right. glad you guys recognize that because we do it as well too. So that's pretty cool. So with each video, um, what criteria did you aim to meet when you were creating? So um, for, like I said, the, these videos were kind of a, a, a thought before we got to them. Um, so when we came to uh, working with the video team and they were really kind of, they themselves in their discussions were kind of balancing the fact of um, creating engaging videos that's demonstration that shows the full process of how to properly both, um, you know, just properly do it, but also food safe, how to process the full deer from kill to freezer. Um, and so they really wanted to incorporate those demonstrations parts of it, but also include um, maybe some nicer images throughout there other than just kind of the meat laboratory side of things. Uh, so they really wanted to make sure that there were both those side of elements. So he wasn't, wasn't getting just absolutely too much of the processing and only the processing, but they uh, leveled it out a little bit. Okay, so you had some variety um, within, which is good. So it kind of breaks up the monotony um, of just seeing one thing and mm -hmm kind of being mundane. So it seems like you guys really mastered that and kind of showing different parts of it to keep your audience engaged. Um, overall, do you think that you guys were successful? Um, and if yes, how? And if not, what did you learn from this process? Well, we definitely feel like we were successful. Um, one of the things that we thought about when we were creating this campaign was the fact that our normal demographic on social media is older women. So I think that our age group, Justin, correct me if I'm wrong, is uh, 45 plus um, and heavy on older than 50. And so we knew that with this campaign, um, especially in the time frame that it was coming out, it was super convenient. Uh, it was about to be hunting season. And so we knew that if we scheduled it, right along through through the opening days of hunting season that um, we would be able to target a demographic that's A, different than what we usually have and B, um, someone that's not generally a, a sought after demographic. And so we were aiming for middle-aged males who were hopefully sitting in the tree stand or in their, um, in their shooting house. And so, um, we thought that we had an opportunity to reach those people. And the issue was, you know, could we get them to stop scrolling and look at what we had to offer? And so um, we tried to use language in our social media posts that was interesting enough to get them to stop. We also paid close attention to what was in the videos and tried to sum it up so that they would see that it was something interesting and worth stopping for. Um, and then overall we we think we had some really good numbers um we did reach the demographic we were hoping for we also got some younger males um even down toward the teen and 20 something age and that was unusual it's not something that we usually see so that was exciting and further proved the point that you know content really does matter and we can get them to stop the scroll if we have something that's exciting enough to make them stop and listen for a second or, or read for a second. So um, I, we were we were really pleased, honestly, with how it turned out. Cool. And it sounds like you learned a lot, um, which I think is so important when you're doing these things because um, you'll get the data from analytics and see, well, maybe we are meeting this, maybe we're not. And so that's cool. Um, can you discuss some of the challenges, if any, that you had when developing this series of videos? Yeah, um, so as I kind of alluded to earlier, a lot of parts of the video was kind of what would be borderline a gruesome thing to see on social media. Um, you know, the processing of a deer is not the, you know, the most interesting thing to look at. So one of the challenges that we had to do was kind of display, like Katie said, some, some language in the post and really making sure that first image they see of the video is not of the deer processing part. It's, it's more of a title page. So that was a challenge for us. And we knew that going forward, 
that um, you know it's a potential for these videos to get flagged for sensitive materials. Um, and I think it actually did in one or two instances mm -hmm. on Twitter. Um, it, it got flagged. It didn't take it down, but it gave it the would you like to see you know more filter? So that was one of the challenges we knew we'd probably face in that, and we did. But uh, overall, I think we did pretty well um, overcoming that. Well, I'm glad because I know there are different groups watching what we do online, and we never want, particularly our universities, to get in trouble for doing our jobs That's right, knowing there are sensitive audiences out. So I'm glad that you mentioned that, and so people going forward may think about especially working in ag, because um, we do process animals, um, we do uh, do things that, you know, everyone may not want to see, but I'm glad you mentioned that and that you guys were able to overcome that. So that's really good. Yes. Uh, so my next question is, this is with organic reach and not paid. Uh, what factors did you take into consideration when posting to garner substantial uh, reach or to reach a, a, a decent audience? Well, one of the things that we we always try to pay attention to is the best time for us to post on social media. Um, it has varied throughout the years. Uh, we initially started having really great reach if we posted things at 11 a.m. And then we moved to an afternoon slot. And now we've realized that we do a lot better if we can post between 5.30 and 6.30 in the morning and definitely closer to the 6, 6, 30, 6 or 6.30 range. And then we also have good traction on Instagram if we post a little bit later in the morning, like 9.30, 10-ish. Um, so when we were discussing what we were going to do, I think we actually time hopped a little bit with this one. Um, we tried to find the best time to post where we got the most interaction. Um, and we watched the first few um, posts that we made to see which ones did better. We played around with it a little bit. And then towards the end, we were able to pick a time that was better, most beneficial, you know, for us not posting too early in the morning, but also for um, the audience numbers. So we did, um, we did a lot of, I guess, strategic posting to figure out what was what was the best option. Um, and then we also um, paid attention to, you know, the content uh, based on each video, which one was more likely to be something that they might be looking at in the morning or the afternoon or how it associated with their hunt, basically. And so, there was a little more at play than just the numbers game. Um, it, it also played into, or, you know, the, the themes also helped us figure out what, to, what time we should post each day. Cool. And I, I've noticed that even working with social media, how it has changed um, and learning your specific audience and when they're watching or they're scrolling. So that's pretty neat how it kind of has those things embedded within it, but it helps you to get your message out at the right time. So that's a good idea to, to follow. Um, overall, you guys submitted your project to the ACE Critiquing Awards program. And can you talk about, did it help you improve or challenge you in developing your campaign? Yeah, every year, you know, we try to enter some projects in, in CNAs um, for the specific reason to kind of help us evaluate and help us plan for the next year's uh, campaigns. And so we really look at our critiques and our scoring um, and just to see how we did and compare, you know, what did right in this campaign that we can implement into others as well. Um, and so that that's really helped us over the years. I know social media uh, category has been only around for a few years, um, so we don't have a lot of data to go after, but we have uh, started to look back at, at past, win, you know, winners or, you know, things that we got harshly critiqued on and really um, helps us evaluate those several campaigns, those bigger campaigns that we want to implement throughout the year. Cool. And I, I think that's a good thing to note that this is a new, what well, a newer category, but it's so fast and, and so much is changing. So just to encourage others, um, that even though they may be just starting out, you'd be surprised at how much you, you know, may be able to come up with or show. So 
I think it's good that you mentioned that. So we know that no project um, is complete in a silo. So who would you guys like to thank or um, talk about that assisted you with completing this campaign? Well, first, I think that it's um, imperative that we thank the specialists and the agents who came up with the idea. Um, they had a timely idea. They had great information behind it. And they really had a well thought out plan for how to portray um, what we needed to catch on camera. And so their ability to do, um, to plan around something that like Justin said earlier is a little bit grotesque sometimes. It was, it, they did a really great job. They had a plan, they thought it out and they um, did a really good job coming up with ways that somebody could stand to watch it on, on a series of videos. And then of course the video team, um, we couldn't have, we wouldn't have these videos without the video team. Um, they did a great job. They worked really hard. It was a long series and they were able to make it a cohesive series that looked good both um, when you watch it, you know, as a playlist in YouTube and, and when you watch it on social media. Um, and then also just our whole communications team from the editors to the, um, to the script writers, um, it really was a team effort. And I think that that's something that we can say about pretty much everything we do in Alabama Extensions. Would you like to thank anyone as well, Justin or? Yep, it's like Katie, we froze Katie up just a little bit. <laughs> it's okay, uh, she's back. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> it's okay. Welcome to um, rural internet in Alabama. Yes, yeah, rural yeah. internet. Well, but I guess the gist that. of what I was saying is that without the team, so. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing that and thank the both of you for, you know, your hard work. Auburn is well-respected within ACE and they're um, award-winning achievements every year always um, excite me, you know, to see what you guys can come up with. So um, thank you for representing your university and thank you for sharing um, what you guys have done to master your class in social media. So um, now we're gonna transition over to, uh, I say the fun part, even though all of it's fun, um, but probably just a little bit more about you guys. Um, beyond your work. And I'm going to ask you a few questions. So are you ready to participate in the lightning round? Let's do it. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> so favorite vacation spot? Beach, definitely. For sure the beach. Any particular beach or just any beach? <laughs> I love um, Port St. Joe and Cape Sandblast in Florida. It's a okay. good drive for me, but beautiful. Okay. Anywhere there is sand, water, and a chair that I can sit there and read in, I'm good. So, right, right, right. So, okay, you guys like sunshine and um, ocean water, so that's cool. Um, favorite TV show or movie of all time? Uh, let's see. I would have to say probably TV show uh, in honor of the late great Betty White. The Golden Girls has got to be classic. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend. Oh! We have to go with it. It's my favorite. <laughs> it never goes out of style. Okay, cool. That is awesome. Um, and I know there's been so much about it the last few years. And, and um, I the reruns are still on. So I know you guys are still watching it, you know. Always. <laughs> and probably seen every episode, right? <laughs> yes. Sometimes they come on and I'm like, man, this is not my favorite one. But I mean, how can you not smile at Betty White? <laughs> there you go. <sighs> name a song that you can listen to on repeat I would have to say Wide Open Spaces by uh, what used to be the Dixie Chicks now the Chicks okay cool, cool. I don't think I could name one I just have shuffle shuffle mode on my Apple music that just kind of goes repeatedly so um, it, it, it really depends on the day honestly okay What's your favorite? Do you have like a favorite genre of music or? You know, again, I'm pretty open. Like you will find that I will be listening to country at one moment, like 90s country, and then switch over to like Adele in the next song. So it, it, it ranges. 
Okay. I was about to say, I, I don't want to force Adele on him, but he, he loves some Adele. Yes. Yeah. But he Adele is lovable. I must I say. mean, <laughs> he is. Cool. Okay. Fondest childhood memory. Um, I have a crazy memory that I don't know that it's my fondest in the world, but um, I loved playing football on the peewee football team when I was in sixth grade. One of the best things I ever did. I got to play with my brother and it was so much fun. <laughs> okay, well, that's exciting. Okay. See, for me, um, I guess it would be um, when I was younger, you know, like two or three, uh, my granddad welded a special seat on the fender of his tractor for me to sit with him when he was in the fields. And so uh, just riding with him right there, there's plenty of photo evidence of me falling asleep in that seat uh, over the years. <laughs> but I guess uh, I guess that'd probably be the best. Tractors are great places to catch a nap. Yes. Yeah. And, and look, it was foreshadowing. You ended up with a career in agriculture, so. That's right. So That's true. Right. <laughs> okay. What's one thing most people don't know about you? Um, I think one thing, maybe people, a lot of people know that I sing, but I sang the national anthem at a Buffalo Bisons baseball game in Buffalo, New York. Ah, and I'm sure you have video to... I think there, I think there's one circulating somewhere. Um, but yeah, that was that was a cool experience for me. Okay, and memorable, of course. Yes. Uh, mine is uh, would have to be that I'm deathly afraid of heights. There are a lot of things that I can handle, but heights are not one of them. <laughs> okay, so not the biggest daredevil. <laughs> not the biggest daredevil. I mean, even Ferris wheels give me the heebie-jeebies. So. <laughs> Okay, what about a motto that you live by? Um, mine would have to be just to treat other people as you'd like to be treated. My mom always said that to me growing up, and I have found that those are just words to live by no matter whether you're in the grocery store or in your office at work. Um, it's just an important thing to do. All right, good one, good one. My um, supervisor, our supervisor, Maggie Lawrence, um, when I was a first student, she, um, the very first paper that I wrote, it was the very first news article, um, she kind of did that motif where, like in, high, in, in middle school, when a teacher would like hide the paper before she showed you, because you know you got a bad grade on it, it was very much that, and, but before she showed it to me, she said, uh, what you did was not wrong, it just could be better. And that's kind of something that I've taken and probably the best piece of advice I've gotten and uh, been given. And it's just a motto to, um, you know, no matter what you're doing, you can always do a little bit better. So keep striving for it. I like that. That's very constructive. Very. I like that. So three words you guys would use to describe yourself. Hmm, that's kind of a hard one. Um, I would have to say mom, friend, and chatty, because I can talk to a brick wall. <laughs> okay. I think, I think the three words would, uh, would vary. Uh, sometimes it's tired, exhausted, and, <laughs> you know, those, those may be the descriptors. Uh, but overall, um, I would say uh, personable, um, honest, and kind. Okay. And I can see all of those. Um, even in the brief time I met you, Katie, I can see those as well. And so I really appreciate you guys today. And it's been exciting and fun. And um, thank you for sharing um, the hard work that you do and also just sharing who you are with um, ACE members and potential ACE members. So this will conclude um, this episode of Masterclass. Um, thank you for joining us for this month's ACE Masterclass. I am Sinead Bradley, Director of Member Services for the ACE Board, and we look forward to seeing you next month for our next feature. Bye.